phases for sure special teams and on offense and everybody that watches Calgary knows that the fumbling has been an issue and a major one over the last few years in big games. Burke Dales blasts that punt and there's Bradley Robinson backpedaling. A jab step and then to the inside. This kid's got some speed trying to turn the corner. He said he had a couple of punt return touchdowns in college and Robinson shows you a little flash there on a return in place of Tristan Jackson. Defensive backs or, or receivers, they want to get that chance. Tristan Jackson is out. They want to show him that they can make that. Make a big return. And Robinson's been close on a couple in getting the corners. So back to work for Ricky Ray. And uh, we mentioned the touchdowns. With the 283 yards, he has now moved into 15th all-time in passing yardage in the CFL. Going past one of the legends today, Russ oh. Jackson. Last week, Bernie Filoni. This week, Russ Jackson. And off the left side, that's Calvin McCarty again. Running hard. Wow, we're just, that's some, some great names at quarterback from the past when you talk about Tracy Ham and all the things that he was able to do. Remember, that's one of the few quarterbacks that ever rushed for a thousand yards. Warren Moon is arguably one of the best ever. Ricky's not going to rush for a thousand. No, that, that one's safe. <laughs> no, that, that one's safe. Yeah, maybe in his entire career, Ricky Ray might get to a thousand. Although, hey, hey, he shook Juwan Armour earlier in this game. Nice run up the middle. Twice this year, he has passed for 400, including 448 the first time against the stamp defense. And the lad to his totals here, Kamal Peterson. With another first down catch, you mentioned Ray will get mid-season consideration as the best player in the CFL, and uh, and that receiver, as you mentioned, uh, will likely get consideration as the best Canadian so far in the CFL this season. Oh yeah, I, I think without question, right now Kamal Peterson has got to be considered a front runner for outstanding Canadian, and you know Paris Jackson in, in Vancouver is having a good year there, but. Mal Peterson has stepped up in such a big way. Big game. The biggest game of the regular season. Labor Day. Looking for his third 100-yard game of the year. And Ray guns that one to Kelly Campbell wide open. Browner brings him down at the Calgary 45-yard line. And Ricky Ray continues this second-half dissection. Well, he's to the left of your screen, and he's just going to settle right down Kelly Campbell into that area right there. As he settles down here, watch Ricky Ray just over top of the linebacking core and in front of any deep defenders who aren't even in the picture. There they come, Brandon Browner. So many choices, so many weapons for Ricky Ray. 22 yards in the last pickup. He's over 300 for the fifth time in nine starts this year. Rolling right, Kamal Peterson, another first down. Tracked by Shannon James at the 30 and it's getting quiet here at McMahon well you know when I look at this this team this becomes a very dangerous team the Edmonton Eskimos Ricky Ray playing the way he's playing on pace for just shy of 6,000 yards with his new weapons Kelly Campbell with that great smooth speed Brock Ralph will learn so much from Kamal Peterson already has in this lineup you go to Kelly Campbell you have Fred Stamps who you know a lot of the coaches feel like maybe the best in that group you know, it, it, it just becomes a very dangerous football team offensively. First down. Ray has time again. Fred Stamps just missed. Stamps thought he had it. Couldn't bring it in. Ricky Ray again drops back, and, and this one just missed. Or it's another touchdown throw. And it was interesting that a lot of the coaches feel exactly the same way. That just inches away. But and 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 one stamp should have had. Yeah, I think he and almost nonchalanted that one, didn't he? Maybe should have, have laid out a little bit there for that one as well. But Ricky Ray put it where he had to. So second and ten. Four minutes into the fourth quarter. Green McCarty, Julian Battle, slowed him up and you know, mark him out about a yard, maybe two, 
short of the first down one of the one of the new head coaches in the Canadian Football League and he's got a lot of respect right out of the gate is Mark Tressman in Montreal who told our producer John Hines recently that he's watched Ricky Ray Montreal hasn't played Edmonton but he's watched Ricky Ray on television and says he wonders if he even has a shower after the game he looks so calm cool and collected in that pocket and he is on top of his game this year third and a couple and Noel Prefontaine will try and get things back together after a messy last miss. This one's through. And it's now a 14-point Edmonton lead. Tomorrow. Yeah, it's that time of year. And it's time for the Calgary Stampeder offense to get going if they want a chance here. From the 35, Dave Dickinson, Brett Ralph Crossford, he's got lots of room. Up to midfield, Kenny Anatolu brings him down. Now this is a small thing, nice play for Calgary to get started on this drive. A small thing though, at the end of that run, Brett Ralph did not change arms with the football. He added in his right arm, which was inside towards where he was gonna get hit. Didn't switch it to the left, didn't fumble at that time, but be careful with that. And the Stampeders go to the hurry up now. Ten minutes left. Try to get that Eskimo defense off balance. Short drop. Nick Lewis threw his hands and almost picked off. Shannon Guerin had a chance, and Nick Lewis has had a quiet game. Did you see Dave Dickinson? He, as well as everyone else at McMahon Stadium, thought Shannon Guerin was going to score with this football. Tips up in the air over top of Nick Lewis. Mm. I think Shannon Garrett took a little peek at how open he would have been. Dave Dickinson took off running like he was going to have to make the tackle or at least try to. And Garrett didn't hang on. Second and 10 from the Stamps 54. Here comes the rush. Dickinson gets away and takes a hit. Anatolu got a shot on Dickinson there. And when Dave Dickinson starts scrambling, I'm sure a lot of people are holding their breath. And he was uh, adjusting the helmet. Of course, that's been his issue throughout his career is those concussions. But you talked about earlier on, Chris, that you know Dave Dickinson does not get nearly as many reps during the week that Henry Burris would get. So you, he, as good as he has been in his career, this is his first real playing time in 2008. He's going to have a little rust. Burt Dales will try and pin the Eskimos. Robinson, 12-yard line. And some heavy hitting downfield there. Mark Grudegood flying in there on the stop. The CFL on TSN is brought to you in part by Rona, proud sponsor of the CFL. Rona, the Canadian how-to people. 9.06 remaining. Here in the fourth quarter. Ricky Ray, Chris, has just taken the, the wind out of the sails of this sellout McMahon Stadium crowd that came in this one. And the, when, he, when he keeps moving the ball, they just get sitting on their hands and pretty quiet. Now they're going to try and turn it up so they can help the defense. Calvin McCarty hits oh, north. Big game. McCarty all the way to the 45-yard line. And that'll be his longest run as a pro, 26 yards. The Calgary Stampeders have been going with that three-man front at times, and this time they just commit early the linebackers to different assignments, and that little seam up the middle is created. Good blocking up front from John Comiskey, the center. Kelvin McCarty takes advantage. Working against the number one run defense in the CFL, he'll get it again. More success straight ahead to midfield and nine more. Well, this is the first half.